Welcome to Automate M365. In this tutorial, we'll build on video 3, where we automatically send an email after a Microsoft form submission. Now, we'll add a condition action to decide what happens based on the form responses. In this example, the trigger is a Microsoft form being submitted, but keep in mind that Power Automate supports many other triggers as well, such as new SharePoint items, incoming emails, Teams messages, or Excel updates. The concept of using a condition works the same way for all triggers. Start by creating an automated cloud flow, give it a clear name, select your Microsoft form from the trigger, and add the Get Response Details action for the same form. With that ready, we add a condition action. In this example, we use two fields from the form, department and priority. If department equals IT and priority equals high, the result is true, otherwise, it's false. Click New Step and select Condition. In the first row, choose Department, set it to is equal to IT. Add another row, choose Priority, set it to is equal to high. At the top, select and so that both must be true. If or is selected, only one needs to match. Under if yes, send an email that says condition result, true. Under if no, send an email that says, condition result, false. You can include dynamic content from the form in these emails, such as the respondent's name, department, or priority. Test the flow by submitting a response with department IT and priority high to see the true email, and other combinations to see the false email. This demonstrates how conditions allow you to control actions based on form responses or any other trigger. In this example, we select both true options, department equals IT and priority equals high. Because both match, the condition evaluates to true, as you can see in the tested flow chart and the incoming email. Next, we select one true and one false option, department equals customer service and priority equals high. Since we're using the in condition, both must match for it to be true. Here, only one matches, so the condition evaluates to false, which is also reflected in the flow chart and incoming email. In the next video, we'll extend this flow by adding an approval action at the end. This will allow another user to accept or reject the request before the workflow continues, making your automation more dynamic and decision-driven. If you found this tutorial helpful, like the video and subscribe to Automate M365 for more Microsoft 365 automation guides.